Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Super Attacker here. Welcome back to Pokemon Basics 101. If you didn't see the first video where we go into detail about what a Pokemon and a trainer are, make sure to go back and check it out. In this video, we're going to be answering the question, what Pokemon game should I try first? Just a small disclaimer, this video does assume you already own a Nintendo Switch, so the video is going to be more geared towards those games. On the Nintendo Switch, there are five different series of Pokemon games. I'll be ranking these from the worst to best in terms of my recommendations for a new player. Please do note that these are just my personal opinions. Every one of these games are a fantastic way to start your Pokemon journey. They all have their own advantages and disadvantages, and I'm just here to just highlight what ones I think are the best. Now with that all out of the way, let's get started. Number 5, Scarlet and Violet. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are unlike almost all other Pokemon games in the entire series. This is because it is essentially an open world game set in the Paldea region. You begin your journey as a student in the Pokemon School of Mezagosa, where you can take classes on Pokemon mechanics. Wow, you can go to a school that teaches you all about Pokemon? This must be the best Pokemon game ever, right? We'll, uh, get to that. One cool thing about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is that it has three separate storylines. One that's all about battling gyms and becoming a Pokemon champion. One about fighting giant Titan Pokemon and collecting Herba Mystica. And one about fighting an evil group of students called Team Star. As fun as Scarlet and Violet sounds, they do come with their own set of difficulties. As a new player, you most likely don't know what types are good against what, and the main mechanic of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is called Terrastalization. When a Pokemon is Terrastalized, it changes its type to one that's been somewhat randomly generated by the game for the duration of the battle. This means that your Pikachu that's normally an electric type could Terrastalize and become a flying type instead for that battle. This mechanic can be a bit of a mind twister for a new player, and if you're just learning to play Pokemon, you may get defeated in battle quite often. Despite this, the games can still be plenty of fun for players. Currently, the game is getting supported with DLC, which will add more Pokemon and most likely more story elements to the game as well. Just make sure that you save and close out of the game every couple hours though, otherwise you may see some pretty game-breaking glitches. Number 4, Pokemon Legends Arceus. Pokemon Legends Arceus is an amazing game, so you're probably wondering why I'm placing it so low right now. Like Scarlet and Violet, Legends Arceus is a semi-open world Pokemon game. You're transported into the past by the god of the Pokemon world, Arceus, and given a single goal, seek out all Pokemon. You'll meet Professor Leventon, who after some story events will give you a starter Pokemon, and you'll be sent on a trial mission capture some basic Pokemon. Pokemon are able to attack you in this game. If you take too much damage, you'll black out and lose some of your items and money. The main battle mechanic in Legends Arceus is called Agile and Strong Style Attacks. Strong Style Attacks will deal more damage, but they can make you lose a turn in battle. While Agile Style Attacks will deal less damage, but you may be able to get an extra attack. The only thing that's a little weird about Legends Arceus is that every Pokemon doesn't have their abilities. Except Regigigas. Rest in peace, Regigigas. Number 3, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Ah, yes, the Sinnoh region. My favorite region in all of Pokemon. These games are the remakes of the original Pokemon Diamond and Pearl for the Nintendo DS. Like many of the games, you can get a starter, battle 8 gyms, an evil team, and an Elite Four and Champion. The main thing this game has to offer is the Grand Sinnoh Underground. Down here, you can find not only strong and rare Pokemon, depending on how many badges you have, of course, but also a bunch of great items as well. This is also where you can find a healthy source of evolution stones to help your Pokemon evolve. And hey, if you got Legends Arceus, then after you've caught every single Pokemon in Legends Arceus, You'll also have access to being able to find Arceus in this game as well. Now, I do have to warn you, the Elite Four and Champion battles at the end of the game are pretty tough. Their Pokémon have competitive items and movesets that can really trick you up. Don't worry, I won't laugh if you lose the Cynthia's Garchomp. It happens to everyone. The Sinnoh games are known for having the toughest champion in the game, so good luck.
Number two, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Pokemon Sword and Shield are the eighth generation of Pokemon games. You, a trainer, will travel the world taking on the gym challenge, so you can fight the unbeatable champion Leon! Did I mention he's unbeatable? After about an hour of the game, you'll arrive in the wild area where you can catch a ton of new Pokemon and take on dens to find powerful Pokemon from Dynamax raids. What's Dynamax? For three turns during certain battles, you'll be able to make your Pokemon ginormous, and they'll be able to use three attacks that are unmissable. Sword and Shield also do have a DLC pass you can purchase, which will open up new areas of the world for you to explore, as well as give you access to new Pokemon. These games are the most linear Pokemon games, so you won't have to worry too much about getting lost. Sword and Shield do, like any other game, have their flaws. Its story is very repetitive, and even when it feels like a big event is happening, you sometimes don't get to participate in it. It's a shame, because these games are really fun to do Pokemon battles in. Number 1. Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, in my opinion, are the best games to start out with for Pokemon. These games are a remake of the original Pokemon Yellow version, one of the first Pokemon games to ever be made. You, a trainer from Pallet Town, start off your journey by doing the main thing you're likely to do throughout the entire game, catching a Pokemon. That's the main thing with Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Your goal is to catch all the Pokemon in the region and collect all 8 gym badges. The best thing is, unlike every Pokemon game nowadays, there are way fewer Pokemon you have to catch if you want to complete your Pokedex. Since this game is only comprised of the original game's Pokedex, you only have to catch a total of 150 Pokemon to complete the game. There are a few Pokemon that you'll need to transfer from other games in order to fully 100% it, but they're pretty easy to find as well. You can find Mew from Floraroma Town in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and if you have the mobile app Pokemon Go, you can catch Meltan and Melmetal in those games. I don't really know the specifics very well of how to get Meltan and Melmetal, but they are available outside the game, so just go look up a quick tutorial on how to get them. If you choose this as your first Pokemon game, then you'd be making an excellent choice. This game has plenty of resources that are designed for helping new players. Heck, some of the gym won't even let you in if you don't have a certain type of Pokemon. P.S. The Pokemon in this game don't have abilities, so that should make the battles a bit easier for you as well. So. Those are my recommendations and opinions on every Pokemon game on the Switch for a new player. I hope this video helped to give you a bit more information on each Pokemon game. If it did, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more Pokemon Basics 101 videos, and I will see you all next time. Peace out.